Hi, my name is Michelle Miles, and the first thing that we're going to talk about is selecting wood. I'm a Coast Salish artist, and we'll talk a little bit about that right now. Here's a stack of wood, and I will show you. You're looking for wood that does not have any knots in it, depending on how deep you carve into the wood. And this is actually a nice piece. Okay, so here's another piece of wood. And this wood actually has a knot that goes directly through the back side. So depending on what you're making, this part's probably going to have to be cut off. Okay, so here's another piece of wood. And as you can see, the knot is halfway through the wood right here. So it's actually a good piece of wood depending on um, how far you're, how deep you're going to carve into the wood. So you can actually use this piece. Okay, so as you can see, I selected this board right here and it has good grain, good grain, and no knots. And this is actually a project. We are going to make a halibut. And we, I selected two pieces of wood, glued them together, and then clamped. This is actually a paddle that is um, painted, um, painted and carved. And it's black and it's red with uh, the negative relief, the negative relief actually left unpainted. And Coast Salish design is made up of are actually characterized by trigons, which are these right here, circles, and then crescents. And those are the four main designs of Coast Salish art. Right here is a painted paddle where the crescents are actually not carved but since it's a crescent and it's a negative relief, the design that's shown here is a frog. Well, the frog eyes, I have two frog eyes with abalone in them. I have an owl and I actually took this from a story, a Lichutzi story um, about a frog or owl and his wife frog. And so, since I didn't carve this um, paddle, um, what happens with the crescent is it's supposed to bring out the design of the owl. It, the owl is actually supposed to pop out at you. So it's a positive. The white is the positive space in the wood is actually in a negative space. So since it's actually not carved, it's supposed to look like it's carved. If I ever wanted to go back and carve the inside of the eye, I would just have to take out the stuff that is not painted. So I would just take out all the cedar in here and that represents all the negative space and remember the the painted part is the positive. It's a two-dimensional design is what they call it. These um, triangles right here actually represent mountains. So if I turn it over, this represents the forest. And that's why I did this design down here because that story is actually, um, it happens in the forest. 
and um, on the back part of the paddle is actually supposed to be an echo which is part of the story and um, so it's just a, a sound like owl sound or owls hearing I guess I would say this is another paddle and it is Coast Salish design also and that's what I do so representing the circles also the negative space you have the trigons as the claws and crescents in his eyes and on the side of his mouth and this is also just painted not carved so the design is to also pop out at you and if I wanted to actually go back in and carve my carve the wood I would just have to go back in and take out the cedar that is in the negative space so now we're going to talk about this raven and it was designed by Mike Gobin and here we have crescents we have longer crescents right here. Here's the circles. And then you have trigons on the sides of the eye. And so with this piece, I'm gonna talk a little bit, little bit about the cedar bark. And um, we use this as a design piece. Um, we actually take the bark, the cedar bark, and soak it. We wrap this piece that's, it's wrapped with rope. And then we actually cut um, slices into the cedar. And then we take it and put it on a stump and pound, pound the cedar until it becomes really shredded. I've had the privilege of carving with the Veterans Department and this was our first project and this is the piece that was cut out which is called a blank I believe and the finished product looks like this. So this piece right here that's inlaid is abalone and it's carved out. There's a crescent that surrounds it. Okay, so here's another blank. And we draw the, we take a template, draw the pattern out. And then we put it on the bandsaw and cut it out. And then from there, this is another finished product, but we finish it off with um, tools that I will be going over later. So this is a draw knife. And you hold it, you have a tight grip on it with your whole hand and all the motion that you're going to do is in your wrist and I will show you a little bit. So it's just taking the wood away in little, in little chunks so you're not going to destroy the destroy your piece and it's actually really soft so draw a knife okay so what you see here is a straight knife 
and I will carve into the wood. I will be, I will actually be making a V cut into the wood was actually, or is actually used now that we have modern tools um, for major, major cuts in your design. It's right here. This knife right here is called a hook knife. And it's also held like the draw knife. So full hand, full grip, thumb, wrist controlled, wrist mo it's all in the wrist, your movement's all in your wrist, in your thumb as your basic muscle, I guess. In this knife right here, you can take out a lot of wood. And so you just motion back and forth how deep you want it. And this is the tool for that job. This is the hook knife that I had just used. And these are the other two knives that I demonstrated before. So you have the hook knife, the draw knife, and the straight knife. We take the template and take a pencil and we draw, we trace around all the negative space. And so I'll turn it over so you can see the other side. Al Charles designed this, um, or made this template for the paddles. This paddle right here belongs to Danny Pablo Jr. And he traced the pattern on, or the template on, and he carved, carved it out so you see all the negative space that he drew on. Like I said, with the pencil, and you just take out all those spaces, the crescents, the trigons. You leave the circles. Crescents also right there. So after you have carved the whole paddle and you want to go back and paint, you leave all the negative spaces that you traced around you leave all those unpainted because what you want to do is actually have the design stand out. So you paint around all your negative spaces. In the previous paddle, you've seen the crescents where they were carved out and you leave that unpainted because you want that to stand out. Here's your trigon. Again, leave it unpainted. Here's your circle, and that's okay to paint because you have that negative space of a crescent right there also. I have to paint this red. I, this is going to be, I'm gonna leave that brown and then maybe go back and paint inside the trigons to have more red in the paddle so it's all right if you paint in those negative spaces but it always has to be lighter than the outer So your inside's light, your outside dark. 
or the other way around. Inside dark, outside light. It just has to be totally opposite colors. <laughs> 